Hello there and welcome back to We Are Crafted in His Image. Project number three today for September Gorgeous Leaves Cocoa and Crafts class. And this is the card that we are going to make. I'm actually going to do this in two sections. I'm going to do part of it right now and then I'm going to stop the video and come back to it because we're going to spray this piece and we're going to need to let it dry for a bit before we continue with the stamping and the cutting and so I'm just going to start out with that part and then pause it and we'll keep on going. So let's get started. Again gorgeous leaf stamp set and our reinkers. but you will also need the spritzers that you got um, and you will need some rubbing alcohol or water. I prefer rubbing alcohol because it dries faster. The water is going to take your paper a bit longer to dry. Um, the rubbing alcohol, uh, or the yeah, water will take longer to dry. Rubbing alcohol will dry pretty quick. Um, so I personally prefer the rubbing alcohol, but either one works. Um, and all you're going to do is these open up like this, and then you're going to drop some reinker down inside there. And then add either your lemon or <laughs> lemon, your alcohol, rubbing alcohol, or your water, and then give it a little shake. And the more drops of reinker, the deeper your color is going to be. Um, now I do recommend that you store these upright because they they will leak a bit. I found that out the hard way. So do want to store them in upright. And you are going to need some sort of an overspray box. Otherwise, you're going to end up with this stuff everywhere. Even with the box, you will end up with it everywhere. Um, and I recommend some scrap paper to practice on the first few times to get to see, do I want more color? Start with a few drops, spray it, let it dry, and decide if you want to add more color or not. Um, first time I did it, I did not have enough of the Cajun craze and it looked more yellow than orange and I wanted it to a bit deeper. Um, so yeah, uh, let's go ahead and let me get out what we need out of our package, out of our little kit here. And let's see, you're going to need this square piece, these two here. And all of your little gold leaves and stuff are in here. I'm going to pull those out later. And this you won't need till later. So this is the only part you're going to need right away. And like I said, I'm even, even though I know what these colors are, every time you spray these, the spray pattern's a little different. Sometimes um, you may find that your, your little tip here is clogged a bit, and you may need to kind of rinse this out. So again, every time you go to use these, get you some scrap paper out, give it a few sprays, make sure um, it's spraying the way you want it to, okay? So let me give this a little squirt here. I've been shaking it so see how it's actually more pink looking right now I think I may want to add a little bit more of the Cajun color let me try my yellow this one sprays kind of funky it has a weird pattern to it yeah I'm gonna add some more reinker to both of mine so let me open this up Grab my Cajun craze here. Give it a shake first. Put a couple drops in. Let me get that excess wipe down there. Shake it. And you may find you have to add some more alcohol. Why is it not wanting to come off the side? There it goes, there it goes. There it goes. All right, give it a spray. All right, I like that color. Set that one aside, let me get the yellow. And I know my yellow is thick. Let 
All right, let's put that way. Give this some shakes. Give it some shakes. And spritz. Also, it's going to look different as it dries. So if, if you wait and let it dry, you get a better idea of what it's going to look like. So I'm going to set this aside. I'm going to grab one of my sheets. I'm going to do the yellow first. And I kind of want it to fade from yellow to the orange. So I'm going to, since yellow and orange blend together, I'm going to almost cover the whole thing with my yellow. All right, and then grab out my Cajun craze here. And let's just do this side here. Whoops. And the further away you are, the more splattery your design is going to look. The closer you are, um, the more concentrated it's going to look. So here I like the speckles showing up at the top. And I think I'm going to put a little bit more. Ah. Now that's going to have to dry. It's going to take a while. And let's grab this one. Again, grab the yellow first. I always like to start with my lighter color. And you can tell, you can see the difference, how many squirts did I have to do to get this yellow because this one sprays, has a different spray pattern than my Cajun Craze does. My Cajun Craze has a very splotchy, um, I'm spraying in this corner on purpose. There we go. And time now to let these dry. So I'm going to set this back over here and clean up my mess because I know I have overspray and I will be back once these are dry and ready to be trimmed down. Okay, bye. Okay, so I am back. Um, the papers are all dry, ready to go. They're a little bit damp, but dry for the most part. As you can see, the color went through, but it did, it's no longer pink. Like before, it was kind of a pink color. Now it is definitely Cajun Craze colored and we are ready to go on to the next step. So before we cut these apart, I wanna do some stamping. I'm gonna make a simple little ink pad. We don't need a big one for this. This is a small stamp um, and not a lot of stamping to do. Is this the one that I already wet? Nope, this one is. Here we go. All right, oh, I need a bigger box than that. We'll go with this one again. There we go. And we're going to use the the three little flower or three little leaves, and I'm going to stick with just I think the Cajun craze and the the um, bumblebee. And I should have mentioned in the last one you could have used whichever colors you wanted in your spritzer. If you wanted to go with the, um, maybe you wanted bumblebee and mossy meadow instead of the Cajun craze color, or maybe the Cajun craze and cherry cobbler, you know, whichever, whichever two you wanted to do would work. Um, turn this a little bit. Actually, I think I want it like that. I think and now all I'm going to do is stamp, <coughs> excuse me, some leaves all over. Actually, I think I might add a little bit more of that terracotta on there. And I might even add in a little bit of cherry cobbler. Let's just put one in the middle. Just because the yellow bumblebee is disappearing on our bumblebee background. There we go. Rotate your paper. Um, you can also stamp off the edge so that not all of them are directly on your paper. Okay. 
There we go. There's that, I think. I'll rotate this a little. Let's do my next one. <clears throat> this closer to me so I can see what I'm doing. Oh yeah, we need to add some cherry cobbler. Oh no, not cherry cobbler. That one's Cajun craze. And I'm going to put a cherry here. And then some more of the bumblebee over here. Let's... Okay. It's kind of hard to see the colors on the darker part. But they do show up. There we go. I have noticed some of the trees in my yard are starting to lose a few of their leaves. They're not very vibrant this year, but they are starting to to drop a few here and there. Won't be long for my yard will be covered in all the oranges and golds. Oh, there we go. And while I have my stamp out, I think I'm going to go ahead and stamp on my envelopes. And for this one, uh, what I'm going to do is take my scrap paper. I'm actually going to tuck my envelope behind that scrap paper. Actually, here, let me do it this way. Um, fold. Oh, oh. Come here. There we go. Now I can stamp all over this flap, off the edges, and nothing is going to, it's not going to get all over everything. Ooh, I like these colors all against the white. They really pop now. So pretty! Let's see. Trying to get it so I don't have the exact same leaf right next to each other all all over. Now obviously you're going to have it next to each other here and there, but like there was a large cluster of those, so I wanted to rotate so that we didn't I also need to be careful. I've got some ink on my edge of my stamp, but I can see it showing up here and there. Not that it's a big deal, but try not to push down too hard. Isn't that cute? Love it. Okay, let's do the next one. Uh, before I start stamping, though, I need to take all of my gold leaves out of here. There we go. All right, put that over here. Let's do our second one. And after a bit, you may find that you have to add a little bit more reinker to your your baby wipe that starts to dry up a bit. Mm -hmm. A little bit more. This is really pretty. There we go. Ta-da! And then one last thing. I think on the inside of my card, I want to stamp a few leaves. Maybe up in the top corner and down in the bottom corner like that. Cute. Okay, let's do this one. Ta-da! Okay, now comes the 
Um, mathematical part. There we go. I won't say the hard part. I'll say the mathematical part. <laughs> I'm going to need your paper trimmer because you're going to need to trim these into strips. Now these are square. So you can decide on this one here, I did it so that the yellow was at the top and then it got down darker as I went to the bottom. But you could actually trim them to go sideways whichever way you want to do it. So I think I may trim this one I'm going to do top to bottom. This one I'm going to do sideways. Okay. Um, you are going to want to probably keep them in order on the side here so that when you get ready to put them on your card it's a little easier. So I'm actually going to do one first and then the other. That way it's less chance of me getting mixed up. Now to cut this you want to cut them at every five eighths of an inch. So this is the halfway mark, which is four eighths. So you actually want to go the next larger line <laughs> over. Right there is where you're going to trim. So one, that's five eighths of an inch. Double check. Yep. Um, half inch mark. That's why I always look at the half inch mark and then I go one over from it. Or Not really one over, it's actually two because there's the sixteenth inch marks are also there, but there. Five eighths. Five eighths. And then this last one is a little bit tricky because you can't really hold it. So you just want to get it lined up on there. Make sure this is down well. And because it's pushed up against this top edge, it shouldn't wobble back or forth. It should be a nice straight cut. Ooh, I almost mixed these up. And there. Okay, now, before I go any further, I'm going to put some dimensionals on the back. So I'm going to flip them over in order, probably put three down each one, maybe four, one, two, three, four. And yes, I've cut these in half. I'll need to cut the next strip of them because I don't have enough. And you don't have to put them up on dimensionals. You could just glue these straight to the background piece. If you don't have dimensionals, that will look just fine. This just gives it, again, more dimension. Just kind of lifts them up a little bit, a little bit more interest. Two, three, four. Five, and then this is... Hopefully there's enough here to do the other card as well. One, two, three, four. I don't know why I kept putting that down. I still need one more set. Two, three, and four. Okay. So now, flip these back over in order. Keep them in order. I'm going to go ahead and assemble this card and then I'll cut and do the second one just so I don't get those mixed up. Too many papers, pieces, too easy to get mixed up. Okay, what I did, what I prefer to do is actually lay them out so you get an approximate idea of what your border is going to be. And so I'm going to put the two end ones on first, I think. No, I'll probably just do one end and then work my way across. So, two, I wish I could have some music on. It's exceptionally quiet in my house. Yeah. 
And I'm just kind of eyeballing. Mainly you want to make sure you're top and bottom. In fact, it looks like I might be slightly off on that. Let me see if I can lift that up. Yep. Come on, get over there. I want to make sure the top and bottom are nice and straight. <laughs> the rest of these keep getting in the way. Come on. It just helps to be able to eyeball that your your borders around them are going to be relatively even. Bottom. Go up to the top. That one's stuck before I wanted it to. There we go. Next one. What would have been easier if I had done foam adhesive sheets on the back of these so that it was one solid piece of adhesive of dimension back there. And you notice I'm, I'm trying not to really push them down very hard yet until I have them all laid out so that I can possibly lift them up if needed between um, before I set them all down really well. If I find out that one's too high or too low or too close to one side, just kind of gently laying them down. And last one. Yeah, it's looking like I'm a little bit off to this side. There we go. Not too bad though. So on the next one, I can give more space. See how tiny this space is, but how large and how much I have here. I could add more, but I think I have them down too hard at this point to move that. So let me move this. <laughs> My dog fell asleep and she's dreaming right now. I can hear her whimpering. <laughs> okay, now this one I'm gonna cut with the, going this direction instead of this direction. So 5 eighths of an inch. Just like before. <laughs> she must be chasing a deer. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear her on there. She's got this little tiny bark going on. Five eighths. That's half. There's five eighths. Let's do that again. <laughs> oh, it moved on me. Yes, it did. Now, this one would be easy if I got them accidentally out of order. It would be easy for me to figure it out because of the coloring. There we go. All right. And our base. Flip them over. Let's get some dimensionals on them. Pretty ombre effect I have going on there. Two, three, four. Nope, I'm going to have to trim some more. This is the teeny tiny little end piece.
And last one. Set this this way, it might be easier if it stays flatter for me. Two, three, four, five, six. There we go. Lay that down. Try not to wiggle the rest. I think it's this pink color is really pretty on the back. Now had I used our thick white cardstock, the color might not have bled through quite as as much as this one did. Oh, I think I got that one too close again. Tiny one. So what have you been up to this summer? I have been busy working in the garden and now it's pretty much just a matter of harvesting and putting everything up, either canning or freezing or dehydrating or... We're pretty sick of pickles at our house right now. If anybody has a really good pickle recipe, I would love it because we're not super thrilled with the ones I put up this year. Except for the refrigerator pickles, those are always good. Okay, so there is that and that. And now what we're gonna do, super simple, I did put um, adhesive sheets on the back. And you'll notice I gave you two different colors. You have gold and you have bronze in your kit. And you can decide, um, like this one here, I have them all the same color. Or you can decide maybe you wanna mix and match. Maybe you wanna put the, um, bronze on and this the gold mixed up or all the same color I'm trying to debate which one I want to do I think I want them all the same I think that would look a little bit I think I want them all the same on mine but I think I want to go with bronze on this one and the gold on that one There we go. So all you got to do now to finish off this card, what you could also do, another way to um, change this up, is you could turn the card this way. Put your leaves in more of this position, and this card could go either direction, whichever way you want it to go. So I think this is actually how I'm going to do this one, like this. Hopefully when I peel this off, it'll take most of those little pieces out of the middle. There we go. And then set that on there. Let's do our little one here. And the medium sized one. Oh yay, it took all of them out. Ha <laughs> ha Right here. Okay, and then what I'm gonna do is actually flip it over. And oh, I got sticky to me. To burnish it down, to make sure everything is well adhered. Give it a little bit more even um, pressure if I do it this way rather than trying to rub it all. Here you end up pushing down in, in in between. I think it works a little better if you do it from the back. So there's that one finished. Let's do this one. Same thing, just peel off your backing. 
Oh, this one did not want to take off the inside parts. They are all still there. And you want to try not to touch the adhesive as much as possible so that you're not removing some of the adhesive. However, uh, you got to get them out of there. Don't have to. I've seen some where they leave part of them in and it looks kind of cool. But for this one here, I think I want them all out. There we go. All right. Stick that one here. My little guy. It's going to go. I want him more on. Uh, there he is, like that. I guess that'll work. You want to make sure he has something to stick to. He's so small. Ugh, oh, come on, guys. There we go. And this corner. Now I have three different cards. Alright, come on. Get out of there. Get off my fingers. You're stuck to me. <laughs> I have a gold finger. I have the Midas touch. And there you have three different variations of the same card. Same same supplies. Just change them up a little bit. And then of course we have the super adorable envelopes. Love it. There you go. Next week we'll be back with some more spritzing as we make our little gift box. Actually gift box is. We have two of them we're going to make. And yeah, so I will see you then. Um, until then, God's love and blessings to you. Bye!